each and every one. I greet you on the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome to our Wednesday night prayer and Bible study. At this time, let us all stand.
for what he is doing in our lives. Let us welcome Ashley Cox. They know better. 
people that are mind is enough suffering for all my monster family. That is what get safe in your history. Amen. God promised that He will never leave us, He will never forsake us, and He will be with us through it all. In Mark 2, 16, there's a question that is often asked, why does He eat with tax collectors and sinners? And sometimes even today, even after knowing the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and His love, we still ask that question, why does He eat with tax collectors and sinners? You see, God loves us just as we are right now. Isn't that amazing? God loves us just the way that we are even right now. That's kind of difficult to accept, isn't it? I mean, it's hard to feel worthy of that kind of love with all our mistakes and our imperfections. Don't we need to be perfect and holy too? Just as He is before He can love us? No, my brother. No, my sister. He loves us just as we are right now. If we're going to understand God, and if we're ever going to understand ourselves in relation to God, we're going to have to bend our minds toward that truth. He is perfect and holy, and we are not. And that's true. What's not true is that because of His, in his perfection, He is drawn only to more perfection. What's not true is that because of his holiness, he demands our holiness before he loves us, accepts us, or even wants anything to do with us. You see, God knows our mistakes. He knows our every imperfection. And nothing is hidden from him. And actually, precisely because he knows, he executed the ultimate act of love. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, to be our king and to save us from our mistakes and our imperfections. So the truth is, like a doctor to the sick, he is actually drawn to our imperfection and sin, our relationships with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit begin to work when we accept and we welcome that love. In Romans 8, 38 to 39, it says that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. We all should really be saying amen because... You know, if we had to be perfect for God to love us, none of us would be saved. But in our sickness, in our weakness, in our sins, in our imperfection, God knew that we needed His love. So undeserving, so rich, and so free. All we have to do is accept, accept the love of Jesus Christ. That love of God, it empowers us. The love of God cannot be comprehended with our finite minds. God is infinite, you know, and that love empowers us to live this Christian life as soldiers of the cross. We like to sing on this wonderful hymn, 412, in your hymnals, on what Christian soldiers.
all the precious name of Jesus Christ. Tonight, I want to give God thanks and praise for His goodness, for His grace, for His mercy. You know, as all this product is taking place, to just bring back my memory of um, 2018, when we were talking about Road and you know, our apartment got flooded out. And as I see all this happen, and I say, Lord, thank you, Jesus. You know, that we're not in that situation again. Um, we up here now, you know, no flooding at all, what can be, but the roads are kind of impossible sometimes. But I still thank God for that time. Um, even when it rains, I can still come to church, even though I'm a Sunday morning and Sunday night. But to God be the glory, you know. Um, so I just want to thank Him for His provision, His love, you know. Um, that I'm not in that situation again, you know, I don't have to go through that. That was really terrible, and my heart really go out to these people, you know, to see the situation they're in, but we just, who can help, help, you know. Um, and there are so much people in this country that can really help, you know, the wealthy of folks. Um, even people who think that they can, you know, in some way can still help somehow. You know, tonight we are gathered here, we're going to pray, and I know we're going to keep them in prayer that God give them the strength and you know, all the resources that they need will be provided. Yes. So I want to thank God for His love and His grace. And I'm going to keep holding on to His promises, you know, for my life and for my family. And I'm just going to ask Him to give me that grace and that strength to continue walking this walk and living this Christian life. You know, it's not always easy. It's definitely not an easy walk, but thank God for His mercy and His word. Um, he never goes back on his will and his promises. So that's the one thing we can always hold on to. You know, sometimes when feeling dumb or depressed or something, but I mean, sometimes I just open the Bible and come upon this scripture and I will just minister so directly. You know, it becomes so personal and I say, wait, God, you really did this. And, you know, every time you need that encouragement, that extra push or something, just open your Bible and read the word of God and it will really minister to you. Yeah. Hold on to the promises and hold on to the word of God tonight. Yeah. Amen. And then thank you, thank you for sharing us. Surely when we look back at all God has done for us, there's so much blessings. We just have to say thank you, Jesus. Amen. Lord, you are so good. Let us all stand. Beyond all my dreams, words can't describe your loveliness. You are glorious in all of your ways. You make my life so beautiful because you are the awesome God.
Amen. Uh, we want to also recognize some of the people that are online, uh, Brother Neil and Sister Serena. Uh, remember them in uh, your prayer. Uh, they are not well, but we're glad that they are on the line. Joshua and family miss you guys uh, this evening. You've been pretty regular these days. Uh, Sarah, Melissa, Ram, Kisun, and your family. Uh, please send in uh, right away your prayer requests. And uh, just letting you know right now, Sunday morning, it's communion. Amen. First uh, Sunday, the last month of the year, December. Uh, so we're looking forward for that special time. Uh, let's turn our Bibles right away as we read the text, as we go into God's God's Word. And uh, we are again at the book of St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 26. So, would you turn there with me as we read from verses 36 through verses 46. Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and said unto the disciples, Sit here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then said he unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. Carry here and watch with me. And he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass away from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he cometh unto the disciples, and he findeth them asleep, and said unto Peter, What, could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, the flesh is weak. He went out away again the second time and prayed, saying, O my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them, and went away again, and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then come in his disciples, and said unto them, Sleep on now, and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, and let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that doth betray me. We are on the subject, man's defining moment. Father, we thank you for your word that has been read and for the messages that have been shared thus far from this passage of scripture. As we look at your focus tonight, how you focus on your mission, on doing the will of God, you allow no distractions uh, to come your way because man's destiny was at hand here in determining whether sinners will go to hell or whether they can have an opportunity to escape a burning destruction and have an eternal home in heaven with God our Father. We thank you dear Lord because you were entirely focused and was not distracted. Glory to God that you went to the cross and you laid down your life and because of that today we have life and we can have it more abundantly. Bless everyone in-house and those that are online with your message in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Please uh, have your seats. I begin by sharing with you, uh, since we are on uh, the message, the subject of uh, distraction this evening, there was a certain pastor and he was 10 minutes into his sermon. And in came two police officers in the service and they pointed to a certain deacon and said to, for him to come out of the pew. Lo and behold, this deacon was also handcuffed and taken away. What was amazing though was that the pastor did not stop his preaching. He kept on preaching. What was even more amazing was that the deacon's wife stayed in, in church for the entire service. You can say tonight that both pastor and the deacon's wife and perhaps the congregation that they were not distracted at all. Even as something like that will take place. You know it don't take much these days for people to get distracted. 
you will learn tonight that one of the choices of weapons of the enemy is that of destruction. Now we are fighting in a war. It is not a physical war, of course. We are fighting in a spiritual war. A war that is taking place in unseen places. It cannot be seen with this physical eye. But it is a war that is real nonetheless. This war is about souls. That's what this war is about. It has been raging now on this planet for 6,000 years. The great preacher Charles Spurgeon once wrote, said, Consider how precious a soul must be when both God and the devil is after it. There's a war raging in the spiritual realm every day and every second. In fact, this war is raging as we sit here in the house of God and for those of you who are in line as well. The Apostle Paul tells us about this war as he writes in the book of Ephesians chapter 6 and verses 12. And he says our fight, our battle is not with flesh and blood. No, but rather he says it's against rulers, against principalities, against powers, against uh, spiritual wickedness in high places. He then goes uh, on to encourage us. He said, brethren, in the light of this spiritual war and battle that is taking place, you must put on the whole armor of God. And that you would stand against the enemy using the weapons that God has given to us. Mighty weapons. Corinthians 4 tells us they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God, to the pulling down of every stronghold, casting down every machination, everything that rises up against us. God has given us weapons to combat it. It might be your circumstances tonight. You have weapons, my friend. It might be your health tonight. You have weapons. Uh, yes, uh, it might be with uh, a people that are coming against you. You have uh, weapons uh, that you can use. Uh, but most important, my friend, uh, is this weapon that is a favorite of the enemy. I say it as a favorite because as I've been studying on the subject of distraction, because our Lord did face that same thing. Satan tried his best to distract him from his mission. Not just in this passage of scripture, but uh, from the very outset of Jesus' ministry, you will see the devil is using uh, distraction because uh, he, he knew for a fact uh, that he could not get Jesus Christ to sin. He knew he could not at all uh, at all win when it comes to that. Because we know that Jesus' nature is impeccable. It was uh, impossible for the Lord to sin because uh, he was the sinless one. Amen. Sent from above. That is why when many examined him, even uh, the judges of his day they could not find one fault in Jesus. He was absolutely faultless. So Satan knew that he could not get Jesus to sin. He could not get Jesus to tell a lie. He could not get Jesus at all to cuss. He could not have gotten Jesus to steal. He could not have gotten Jesus at all to commit any type of sin, fornication, you name it, my friend. Jesus was impeccable. His nature. But there was one thing that Satan could have done and tried. And that was to distract him. Let me say this earlier on my friend. If the devil cannot get you to sin. He's going to try to distract you. So be warned to that my friend. Yes sir. He will try his very best to do that. So the weapon that he uses. And it's his favorite weapon. Is the weapon of distraction. If he cannot destroy you, he will try to distract you. His goal is rather simple. And that he comes, the Bible tells us in the book of John chapter 10 and verses 10. 
He comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And that is what the, the devil has come to do. It is up to you as a believer in Christ. It is up to us as the church of Jesus Christ and the church of the born again to stay alert. Like Jesus encouraged the disciples in Gethsemane, stay alert, be vigilant, stay alert, watch and pray. He encouraged them. It's the same for us today that we do not fall prey to Satan's schemes and devices. Now, the dictionary.com gives us the another meaning of the word distract. And so I'm giving you these meanings so that you can have a better understanding of distraction. And so it says uh, to distract it can mean to draw away. To draw away. If you are being drawn away, you are being distracted. The Bible tells us in the last days, what will be very prevalent is that there will be a drawing away. I ask myself, how is this going to happen? What scheme, what devices would the devil use to draw away the souls of men? And to draw away even people who have been sitting in the pews of the church and some of them for many years. What scheme can the devil come? Because these people have the knowledge of God's word. They have been in church. And some of them you can practically say for all their life. But yet the Bible warns that there will be a drawing away. There will be a falling away in the last days. How is this going to happen? You cannot come and tell a man or a woman that is strong in the faith to go ahead and sin. But that man and that woman, I tell you, would look at that and say, No way, no way, I am not going to sin against God. No way that I am going to do such wickedness in the sight of God. So what is the devil going to use uh, to draw souls away, to draw people away, to draw people away from uh, the church? You ask yourself uh, the question, and the answer, my friend, is distraction. Distraction is what he is going to use. So the dictionary says uh, to distract is to draw away or to divert, to take your attention away from what is your primary purpose in life uh, and to place it now to divert it uh, into something that is secondary, not something that is necessarily bad or evil, my friend, uh, but it is not God's ultimate purpose. Uh, I want us to understand that uh, this evening. It also says to provide uh, a present diversion. To provide a present diversion. Now this is uh, so subtle. He will bring things into your lives. He will bring things into your mind. You've got to watch that. To divert your attention to that which is not first and foremost as a believer, as a child of God. Now distractions by design are meant to get you off course from God's will. So the enemy wants you to be preoccupied with your situations that you will take your eyes up of the Lord Jesus. Why? Because focusing on your situation makes it seem that it is bigger than your God. Although we know that God is greater than everything that we face. But the more that you look at your problems and the more that you look at your situation is the lesser you think of your God. But the more that you look at your God and behold the face of your God, it is the more, the lesser your situation, your circumstances and your problems, your mountains, your trials and your troubles will be. That is the secret, my friend. Keep your eyes steadfastly upon the Lord. And you will find, uh, yes, strength. Uh, you will find power. You will find anointing to face all the challenges uh, that comes your way. Now, if uh, we fall for distraction, uh, then uh, we will become ineffective in our walk with God, uh, in our faith, uh, 
in our testimony to those that are on the outside. You will lose the potency of your testimony. Even though you may have walked good for a long while, for years you have stood strong and firm. But if you don't watch out with distraction, you can lose your potency for Christ. Yes, sir. And that testimony which I've seen happen to so many people. Now you and I have a unique purpose. And the enemy does not want you to live out that purpose. So adversary may even send friends. Now listen to me carefully, my friend. He might send friends into your life. People that are fun to be around with. Come on, somebody. Yes. People that uh, you find joy being around. Certain happiness being around. Certain pleasures being around. But you have to be absolutely careful um, when it comes to distraction, my friend. Because he can even use those, um, yes, that are closest to you to discourage you from walking in obedience to God. So you have to watch out for that as well. They are not bad people, no way at all. They don't intend to hurt you, my friend. But nonetheless, you've got to be absolutely careful with some of these friends because my, my, they are not spiritually inclined. They do not understand spiritual things. They do not understand the walk of a believer. They don't understand the closeness that you must keep to Christ. They don't understand spiritual things because they are natural. They are governed by the natural world and the natural senses. Oh, they are fun to be around, I tell you, my friend. But they can become a distraction and they can become a hindrance when they take you away from your primary purpose and your calling from God. When they come between you and your relationship with God, then it is a distraction in your life and you have to watch for that, my friends. You got to realize that not all distractions are really negative. Not all distractions are troubling, as you say. Some even might look like they are an answer to your prayers. I tell you this thing about distraction, is so subtle, my friend. Yes, for instance, a man begins to pursue you as a young lady. And you know that is something that is very, very, very common. And vice versa as, as well. And so to you it seems that it's everything that your heart desires. In fact you can say preacher I've been praying about this thing and I tell you this is a God sent. <laughs> this man is everything that I have prayed for and desired. This young lady is absolutely uh, sent from heaven itself. She's like an angel. Yes, yeah, sometimes you want to know which angel. Is it a God angel or is it a fallen angel? But my friend, it's what you desire you say to yourself. And this is why it is critical. This is why it is crucial that you use God-given discernment. Because not all that glitters is God. I know we all say what not all that glitters is gold. But I want to change it a little bit, my friend. Uh, hallelujah for us as believers. Not all that glitters uh, is God. Even Satan disguises himself in Corinthians, the Bible tells us. Uh, and he transforms himself into a very angel. An angel of light, the Bible tells us. Uh, and many are deceived uh, by his uh, cloak. Uh, by his, the way that he presents himself, um, 
You have to have that spirit of discernment. You have to be walking in the spirit. You have to be absolutely alert, especially in these last days about how the enemy comes. So you have to be careful. When it comes to the devil attacks against us, he does not need to lead Christians into gross sin, to do great damage to our testimony for our Lord Jesus Christ. All he has to do is this, distract us from seeking God. Distract us, yes, sir, from what is necessary. And I'm coming back to a passage that we looked at last week, glory to God. That one thing, amen, that main thing. You see, the devil is not going to just come up against you like that and says, listen, this is uh, something that I want you to, to do and something I want you to fall into. And it paints sin over it in big ball letters. S-I-N. You're not going to go for it. I am not going to go for it. Because why? Because we are believers in Christ. We don't want to displease the Lord. So we are not just going to dive into sin, my friend. We are not just going to walk in disobedience just like that. We are not going to fall like that. And no, sir. No, we are believers too long. But I tell you what he does. He comes now to distract us. If he can get us to fill our lives, for instance, with world events just to distract us. Be careful, my friend. If he can just fill our lives with activity, yes, just as a distraction. You know, my friend, I tell you, if he'll just load you up and load you up and you have no time for God, then you know, sometimes you pray and say, Lord, give me a job, Lord, give me a job. And, uh, and, and you're in church all this time. And so, uh, Lord, give me a job. You're in church all this time. And the Lord finally answers your prayer. Hallelujah, glory to God. You got a job. But somehow, my friend, there are other opportunities that comes with that job. In that job, the opportunities to, to put out some more time and to get some more additional money. There's an opportunity now to work on weekends as well too uh, in that job uh, and to work on Sunday and it promises to give you double time or triple time and whatnot. He says, wow, uh, this is a blessing from God. Or is it my friend? Is it my friend? Anything that takes your way from God is not a blessing from God, my friend. It's a distraction from the enemy. Are you following me tonight? Are you following me tonight? It's a distraction from the enemy, my friend. Yes, you got to know where your priority lies. You got to know where your devotion lies, my friend. Because it is so easy to be distracted until, my friend, you have lost all conviction about it. Because as, as when you begin to compromise in your faith, you have all distractions coming to your life. And you, you begin to, first you've got to lie to yourself and say, so, well, I didn't do nothing wrong. Because all I'm doing here is I'm working hard. All I'm doing here is providing real good for my family. All I'm doing is saving up money for a vacation. All I'm doing is saving up money, you know, for hard times, a, a lot of times. But is it at the expense of your spiritual life? Is it at the expense of your soul, my friend? Is it at the expense of your family's spiritual life? Then you ask yourself, is it a blessing? Is it an answer to prayer? Or is it a distraction from the enemy? You've got to ask God for the discernment. And says, Lord, I want to be able to see it as it is. You got to know when the Lord is bringing in something in your life, and you got to know when the devil is bringing in something like. Remember, the devil will not always bring in something bad. I'm telling you that again, my friend. So don't think uh, that everything bad is of the devil. There are some good things, my friend, uh, that the devil might bring into your life. Not saying some good things. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, in order to distract, that's all he wants to do, is to distract you from fulfilling God's purpose and doing it His will. And those are the things uh, 
that we got to be aware of. And so what he does is that he brings in some of these worldly things and he does it so masterfully. Oh, I tell you, because remember, he is a master of distraction, my friend. And so we are lured away from heavenly things. And now our time is given now to worldly things. Our energy is given to earthly things and not to spiritual things. So let us be guarded today and every day of this subtle work of the devil, my friend. We don't have to rub out. You do not have to kill someone. You do not have to commit adultery. You do not have to do great harm, my friends, um, to somebody else um, in order to hurt your testimony and even ruin your testimony. All you have to do is to give in uh, to Satan. Give in and allow uh, the spirit of destruction that has taken hold of the world and even sometimes in the church to get all upon you and the devil will ruin you for sure. So before it gets a grip on your life, um, recognize it for what it is uh, and make a stand firm and says that I will not be, um, allow myself uh, to become distracted. Even how good the opportunities might be, how grand the opportunities might be. I'm not going to allow myself to be distracted because why? It is with my soul. Remember the devil is fighting for your soul and God is also fighting for your soul. Someone says this, if the enemy can destroy you, then he will distract you. If the enemy cannot distract you from time alone with God, then he will isolate you from the help that comes from God alone. If Satan cannot have your heart, he will do his best to distract you. So when the enemy sends distraction, they never, they never look like distractions in the first place. Sometimes they look as answer to prayers. Sometimes they look at opportunities. Sometimes they look at, 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 at blessings coming from God. But the final product and the final result is that one is drawn away. Not all of a sudden drawn away. But little by little there is a, a drawing away, my friend. From the things of God, uh, from spiritual things, from spiritual activities, uh, from the church, from the prayer meeting, from the Bible study. And we are drawn away to all these uh, nice things of this world. All these glamorous things, the things that we got to have because it brings me happiness. Uh, and who is against happiness? Uh, is God against happiness? We rationalize our mind. Oh, God uh, created us to be happy. So anything that makes me happy, then it must be of the Lord. Amen. Oh, be very careful, my friend, uh, about that. Because that is not true, my friend. The devil makes many people happy, but the happiness is only temporal, my friend. Oh, sin is very pleasurable. But I like what he said about sin. Amen. The Bible tells us that the pleasures of sin is for a moment. The happiness of sin lasts for a moment. The happiness that the devil gives, my friend, it's only momentarily. But it strikes like a snake at you after. I tell you, before you know it, that you are taken by the, the devil. No, we should look beyond that and not allow ourselves uh, to become distracted. And this is what happened to Martha in our text in the book of Luke, uh, chapter 10, verses 41 and through verses 42. The Bible tells us uh, that she came to Jesus and she complained to the Lord, uh, her sister, I left her to do all the work in the house. And I'm doing a good thing here, Lord. I'm not doing anything bad. I'm here serving. I'm here serving your disciples. I'm here serving the guests. I'm here even serving you. That's not a bad thing, God. 
It's a good thing and it should be done because uh, you have been good to us. Uh, and so I want to make sure that you come in my house uh, that I do the best for you. And she said, tell my sister to come and help because uh, she does nothing. She is lazy. All I see her doing there uh, is sitting at your feet. Uh, and Jesus looked at Martha with love in his heart and said, Martha, Martha, you are covered with much serving. You are troubled with much serving. But your sister, Mary, has chosen that one good thing that shall never be taken away from her. My friend, there are many good things, certainly, but there is one good thing that we should seek after. Mary chose that. And that was where? To be at the feet of Jesus, uh, to hear his lovely voice, his words, to behold uh, his beautiful face. Glory to God. Amen. That's the best place to be. Hallelujah. And then we spoke about, and we'll come back with that next week, God's willing, if we are here on planet Earth. Uh, in the book of Psalm 27 and verses 4, where David said, One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire at his temple. Praise God. You see the parallel, my friend. Jesus said, One thing to matter, one thing to matter, your sister has chosen that one thing. David said, One thing also. One thing, glory to God. If you have one wish in this world, I wonder what it will be right now. If God were to give you one wish, any wish that you wanted, what would you ask for? You know, it is said that when people ask that question, the number one answer they get is money. Am I correct, my friend? Money. The one wish I have, I want to have money and lots, lots of money, my friend. But listen, there are people that got lots of money and they got no salvation. Amen. Come on, somebody. There are people that got lots of money and they're on their way to hell because they don't know Jesus. There are people that got lots of money and that money can't save their soul, my friend. It can't save their spouse's soul and it can't save their children's soul. Thank God that we got it tonight. Amen. Amen. Praise God. In Jesus Christ, glory to God, hallelujah. Amen, glory to God. The main thing, my friend, hallelujah, is to look into the face of our Savior and the things of this world be strangely there. Praise God. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full. In his wonderful face And the things of earth Will go strangely dim In the light of his glory Let's all close our eyes Amen, let's all stand there You've got to open your eyes and you have to stand there All right, I want you to open the heart Hallelujah. As we sing this, glory to God, can lift your hand up. Sing this beautiful chorus, the light of the message tonight. To your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face. Let us uh, pray for these uh, who have sent in these requests tonight, and then we're going to break up into our groups and spend the rest of the time in prayer. So, Sister John is asking prayer for her children's father, uh, Winston Diaz. He's in the hospital and not doing well. Father, we pray for Winston, and he is in the hospital. And Lord, you know what is going on right now in his life. And he is well there, Father. But dear God, our sister has sent out a special request for him. 
Lord, that you would visit him right now on that bed, dear Lord, and God, that you will touch him, dear Father, not only physically, but spiritually as well, too. If you don't know the Lord, I pray, dear Father, that his heart will be open even now, that he can say that sinner's prayer. And I pray, dear Lord, too, that you would raise him up and heal him if his, this is not his time, that you would bring him out for your honor and for your glory. You also lift up into Rams, Ramsaran. Pray for her father. He did triple bypass surgery eight years ago, and he is uh, sick now. And the doctor said his heart is really weak. Father, we pray for our sister's daddy. And Lord, you heard what the doctor said, that his heart is really weak. And after that triple bypass eight years ago, dear Lord, you have kept him the land of the living. And Lord, we know you can easily keep him another eight years, dear God, if this is your will. And I pray, dear Lord Jesus, even now, dear Father, that you would surround his, him, dear Father, around his bedside, dear Lord, and touch that weakened heart, dear Lord. Remember what the word of God tells us, that the Lord, Indeed, is the strength of our lives. And Father, we thank you, dear Lord, for bestowing upon him strength in that heart, dear Lord, we strengthen, dear Father. Again, if you don't know Jesus, I pray that he will come to him. Bless our sister Indra and all those who have been having sick home we know the flood, dear Lord, have taken hold of so much people in central Trinidad out there, Father. And we pray, dear Lord God, that you will continue, dear Father, to provide and to sustain and to keep us uh, even in these last days that we are living in, in Christ's name. Amen. We want to bid our viewers uh, uh, good night and let you know again, Sunday morning is special Sunday because it's communion. The last communion we are going to be serving for this year, 2023 until the 1st of uh, January 23. So we invite you to come on Sunday evening as well. So God bless you guys. Good night to those online. Everybody else can have to see.